Facts First presents Man finds gold mine on property, goes in and realizes he's made a huge mistake. We all have the dream of one day buying our dream house. Most people work for years to be able to afford to move into their forever home, and when we think about buying our forever home, we don't expect to find ourselves smack dab in the middle of a mystery. Christopher Wanless bought a property that stood on 16 and a half acres of woodland fields. He was excited about the purchase because he always wanted to have plenty of space. Christopher had walked the property plenty of times after moving in, but it was during the summer, and now that the weather was getting cold, the area started to look different. The trees were now bare, the grass was dead, the harsh weather also caused the bark to strip from the outer layer of the trees. Despite the changes, though, Christopher still found his property beautiful. While he walked, he was on autopilot. He was lost in his own thoughts, not really paying much attention to anything, except for the beauty around him, of course. He wasn't so in his own head that he didn't see everything around him. And then something caught his eye. Christopher stopped walking when he saw something odd. At first, it looked just like a hole in an old tree, but when he got closer, he realized that it wasn't a tree. It was a tunnel that was intentionally made. Christopher wanted to get a closer look, so when he moved in closer, he fell three feet down into the hole. When he looked up, he realized he was in front of a mine. He couldn't believe there was a mine on his property. The real estate agent never mentioned that when he bought the house, nor did the sellers. By the look of the mine, Christopher assumed that it was very old. He wanted to get a better look at what was inside. Christopher was incredibly excited that he found a mine on his property. He says when he first saw it, he thought about Indiana Jones and the Underground Railroad. He had no idea what secrets this mine held, but he was going to find out. He rushed to his house to get a flashlight so that he could inspect the mine thoroughly, and he saw that there was moss at the entrance of the tunnel, but he wanted to know what laid behind that opening. When Christopher arrived back at the entrance of the mine with his flashlight, he noticed sparkling pieces encrusted on the walls, and that piqued his interest. As he started walking down into the mine, he saw that the old walls were damp and they looked like they were ready to crumble in on themselves. He started to get a bit worried that he would disturb the soil and maybe even be crushed to death. He tried to put this out of his mind, though, and he decided to press on. He planned to search the whole mine, no matter how long it took. He even made sure to bring three extra batteries, just in case the ones in the flashlight died on him. The deeper he got into the mine, the more those walls sparkled. He hoped that it was gold, that he'd be rich. And that thought left his mind completely, though, when he noticed something as he continued down that dark mine. Despite the weather outside, it was very damp and cold in the mine. Each time Christopher stepped, he noticed that his footprint made a deep indentation into the soil. He also noticed that there was water coming in from somewhere because the water seemed to be flowing. When he saw no signs of stagnation, he was a bit relieved. He knew it was a good sign because stagnant pools of water in abandoned mines they could release dangerous gases when disturbed. Since the water was flowing, Christopher knew that it wouldn't be dangerous to continue on. He continued on for a bit when he realized that he couldn't see the end of the tunnel, and suddenly he felt like something or someone was there. Noises were echoing through the tunnel, and they seemed to be coming from right behind him. Intrigued, he decided to follow the sound. As Christopher continued down the path, he really started to get creeped out. There was no light ahead, no movement, no warmth, no air. He held his flashlight out to use it as a weapon if necessary. The noise got louder and he was sure that he'd heard sounds of machinery and metal parts. Soon voices began to fill the mine. Christopher called out wanting to know who was there. The only response he got was his own echo. He was afraid, but he didn't let his fear take over. He wanted to know who was there. As Christopher walked, he noticed that his feet were sinking deeper and deeper into the soil with every footstep. There was a yellow ventilation system in the mine, and it appeared to be falling apart. There were chains hanging from the ceiling, and they weren't far from one another. They were rusty and moldy, and Christopher began feeling strange. He says there was a weird vibe in the mine, as if something didn't want him there and was pulling him back. As the temperature around him dropped even more, he felt a negative presence around him. 
He followed the path of the water, wondering if someone was living down there. When Christopher was about 150 feet into the tunnel, the chains hanging from the ceiling started to swing as if someone was pushing them. He couldn't see anyone and his claustrophobia started taking over. He was sure somebody was watching him. He decided he had to get out of the mine quickly. When he was out, he wanted to find somebody to help him figure out what was really going on inside the mine. Christopher didn't stop running until he got to his front door, and when he got inside, he called the real estate agent who helped him with the sale. The real estate agent told him that the estate was home to many mining sites. Also, during the turn of the century, there were many small mines scattered across the hills. He mentioned the sparkly walls and his experience in the mine, and the real estate agent said they'd send somebody to check it out. Christopher felt relieved only for a second because things inside his home started to get weird. While Christopher was standing in his kitchen, the lights began to flicker, the lights blinking like a strobe light, and soon the kitchen was completely dark. He tried to turn the light on, but nothing happened. Soon he started to feel a cold breeze over his face and he began to panic. He used the flashlight that was still in his pocket and he went to the thermostat. The temperature in the house had suddenly dropped significantly. He could see his breath in front of him. He was sure the electricity was out because a fuse had tripped, so he went to the circuit breaker. When he got there, though, everything was fine. None of the fuses had tripped. He assumed the problem was related to faulty wiring, but he was still nervous. He got back upstairs and poured himself a drink when the doorbell rang. Christopher opened the door, and a man named Mr. Ruddall was there. He was sent by the real estate agent to check out the mine with Christopher. Mr. Ruddall was very intrigued by the substance that Christopher described being on the walls. The two men walked in silence to the mine. When they got there, they turned on their flashlights. This time, the sparkle on the wall seemed even brighter to Christopher. Mr. Ruddall was excited by what they were seeing, but suddenly he felt choked up and creeped out. He told Christopher that he was having mixed feelings about the whole thing. It turned out that it was gold that was on the walls of the mine, but Mr. Ruddall wasn't sure why it had gone untouched like this. Why would the miners abandon the job with all of this gold there just to be found? Mr. Ruddall told him that there was a lot of local gossip about the miners and the mine from the turn of the century. He didn't know of anything specific or what happened to the miners to make them leave so quickly. Christopher wanted to learn more. Christopher wanted to investigate further and he kept walking with only the light from his flashlight. This time, he walked further than he did the first time. The darkness was all around him and he tried not to panic. He made it 600 feet into the mine when he saw where the water was coming from. Up ahead, he saw a door. He knocked on the door, knowing that nobody would answer, and he decided to open the door and see what was inside. When Christopher opened the door, he saw furniture. There was a lot of old junk in behind the door, and he couldn't figure out how it got there. Who would run out, leaving all of their things behind like this? Suddenly, the air around him started to get thicker, and he began to panic again. He didn't let his fear get the best of him this time, and he went further into the room. He could make out a rusty bed frame and realized it was someone's hideaway. When he reached a dead end, he was about to turn around when he noticed that there was some sort of handwriting on the wall. Christopher flashed his light on the wall and saw that the writing was vertical lines. They were scratched four at a time and it looked like they were made with fingernails. He wanted to know who lived there, why they were so eager to get out. On the opposite wall, he noticed that the scratches weren't just scratches. It was a message that he just couldn't quite make out. He planned to take a picture of it and then put it onto his computer to see what it might be. After taking the picture, he heard a noise, and soon the hair on the back of his neck stood up. He had goosebumps all over his body. He kept pointing his flashlight in different directions but saw nothing. When he felt a cold breeze and heard the sound of metal crashing, he started to panic. When he heard a whisper in his ear, he began to run. As he ran from the mine, he could hear the noise in every direction and it was getting louder. The air got very cold as he headed for the entrance. When Christopher got to his house, he felt unsettled. He heard knocks coming in pairs of three. Panicked, he shouted hello, hoping to get a response. He heard nothing, so he went to get his camera. When he looked at it, there was nothing on the SD card. Everything somehow had been deleted. He took his camera back to the mine, refusing to get scared away this time. When he walked in, he was sure that he saw a dark object out of the corner of his eye. 
The deeper he went into the mine, the more noises he heard. There were sounds of metal that turned into an awful sound. He started to have trouble breathing, and his head was pounding. Christopher knew that he couldn't face whatever was in the mine, and he had to get out as quickly as possible. Christopher wasn't sure what was going on in the mine, but he was sure that it was supernatural. He felt uncomfortable in his own house, so he decided to get a coffee at the local coffee shop. There, he did an internet search for someone locally who specializes in the paranormal. He needed to know what he was dealing with. When he opened the psychic's door, there was a chime. Suddenly, he was back at the mine and he smelled incense. Next, he saw a woman dressed in red and purple. She was holding her hand out to him and he heard a chime song. He opened his eyes and realized that he was in the psychic's shop. He got in his car and drove right to his mother's house. She put the house on the market and handled everything for her son. He wanted nothing to do with it. The local real estate developers tried to reach him, but they could only get to his mother. He didn't want anything more to do with the house, even from a distance. This man found gold on his property. He went in and realized he'd made a huge mistake. He wishes now he had just left well enough alone. Subscribe for more.